Welcome to Mr. B's Auto Shop. Today we are going to discuss measuring voltage and measuring voltage drop. In order to do this, we will need a DMM or digital multimeter with a voltage setting. There are two voltages. We have AC voltage and we have DC voltage. So first we are going to measure AC volts. This meter is an auto ranging meter we will be using this meter and a manual ranging meter throughout this series of instruction on circuits and measuring circuits. So we're gonna go ahead and measure AC voltage first. So you're gonna go ahead and flick your dial to the AC volt symbol. As we discussed when we got familiar with this tool, the AC voltage symbol is the letter V with the sine wave over the top. Once again, this is an auto ranging meter, so I do not have to select the correct range. The meter will do it for me. On my leads, I'm gonna remove my protective tips. Remember the protective tips are an important part of the safety of this meter. And when you're using them uh, removed, it drops the category of the meter one level. So I'm now gonna go ahead and place the leads into the outlet. And now I have an AC voltage reading. So that outlet is producing 117.8 volts. Notice I didn't have to make any decisions. It just reads the correct range. So that's a big benefit of using an auto ranging meter is when you're first starting out, it selects the correct range for you. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to measure AC of a lower voltage. Go ahead and remove the probe, and we are going to test low voltage AC. Being that AC is alternating current, it's positive and negative, 50% of each, there is no polarity. Uh, the meter will read correct, and in this case, the meter is reading 16.05 volts. You'll notice that in the corner of the meter, it shows AC voltage, showing us what we are measuring. So this would conclude the measuring of AC volts. We are now going to move on to DC volts. So we're gonna select the DC setting, which is the V with the dotted and solid lines above it. DC volts has a polarity, so it is important to get an accurate reading that we place the red lead in positive and the black lead into negative. So we're gonna go ahead and measure the voltage here. In this case, my meter is showing me five volts. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the next tap. And you can see that we have 12.03 volts. So measuring voltage is really easy. If you cross the leads and put them in backwards by accident, you will not damage the circuit. The only thing that will happen is you will now have a negative symbol in front of the voltage reading. The next thing we're gonna learn how to do is called voltage drop. Voltage drop is probably the most useful measurement when diagnosing an electrical circuit. It lets you know the amount of energy lost or consumed across the particular component or across the wire or connection. We're, when we're measuring voltage drop, it is important that the circuit is operating. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this circuit on. Voltage drop across the load, and a load can be a light bulb, it can be a motor, or anything that consumes electricity, should be within one half of a volt of source voltage. We know that source voltage is 12.05 volts. So we are now going to measure voltage drop. And it should be within on one half a volt. And you'll notice that the meter is reading 11.8. So that tells me the load is working. Or if the light was not on, that would tell me that the load was bad. The next thing that we could use a voltage drop for was checking for a wire that has a fault. 
the maximum voltage drop of any wire should be 0.1 volts unless it's a high amperage wire like a starter wire then it could be a maximum of 0.3 volts so we're going to go ahead and measure voltage drop of the ground side and you can see that this one gives me 22 millivolts one thing that's important is whenever you're reading a meter to pay attention to the designation next to it it's either going to have a big v for volts or a small m and a big v for millivolts or thousandths of a volt so if we were to look at this in volts we would actually have 0 0.0227 voltage drop which is well within the specification we would do the same thing on the power side and on the power side we should never have more than 0.5 volts of voltage drop once again if we look at the meter we have 139 millivolts or 0.139 volts voltage drop can also be used to measure a fuse to test if a fuse is working whether or not it has voltage passing through the uh, fuse should have a zero voltage drop which indicates the fuse is good or less than 0.1 and in this case we have 24.3 millivolts which would be 0 0.021 in this right now volts so that's well within the specification of course if there's a problem with the fuse the fuse would then read source voltage for voltage drop and you'll see that i'm at 12.03 volts which is pretty much equal to source voltage and you'll notice the light is not on, indicating there's a problem in the fuse. The next measurement we can make is across a switch. The maximum voltage drop that we can have across the switch is 0.3 volts. If the switch measures 12 volts or source voltage, then either the switch is in the off position or the switch is faulty. So I'll go ahead and flick the switch. In this case, it was in the off position and you can see we're measuring 10 millivolts or 0 0.001 volts, which is well within the 0 0.3 volt uh, window. So by using voltage drop, we can determine a faulty wire. We can determine a faulty load, a faulty fuse or a faulty switch. This will take care of a lot of the problems that you are hunting and it will make it fairly easy. In the next series of programs, we are going to do each individual type circuit and we're going to use the four circuit testing steps that will find the problem very quickly and very accurately without you having to lose your hair or buy a dozen parts because you cannot pinpoint the problem. Thank you for watching Mr. B's Auto Shop, and I'll see you in the next lesson.